Hi! Welcome back to my channel. I want to thank you because there are lots of people that were asking how is the process, what are the scope of the exam and all. Some of them I believe they passed the qualifying exam. I mean, congratulations, you have the qualifying exam. You're now on the next stage which is the interview. But for today, we are going to be discussing the scope of the exam. So, marami kasing nagtatanong sa akin, paano ba yung exam? Ano ba yung kailangan i-expect sa exam? Ano ba yung mga kailangan nilang aralin sa qualifying exam? So, in this video, we are gonna discuss all of that. Before we start our video for today, so don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit the bell button below that so that you won't miss any of my reviews, no? Without further ado, ayoko nang pahabain pa. Let's start with our video. One of the scope of the qualifying exam is a referral letter making. What's referral letter, by the way, no? Referral letter is like a letter when your provider wants to refer one of his patients to other provider. Now, the tricky part is how will you make it? So that's what we are going to be discussing today. The structure of the referral letter is very easy lang naman yan. First, in the referral letter making is you need to put the name of the patient, patient's name, and the date of birth in reference, no? What do you mean by in reference? In reference, uh, yun yung parang above the body of the letter, may nakalagay na RE, may uh, colon, tapos ilalagay mo yung patient's name, kama, tapos yung date of birth. Parang ganun. You can now proceed with the body of your referral letter. So, sa unang paragraphs, so kailangan siyempre, you would state the reason why you are referring this patient to another provider or clinician. Like for example, sige, magbigay tayong example. I'm referring Mrs. Smith for evaluation and procedure for weight management and surgical procedure. And then after no, siyempre, sabi niya weight management and surgical procedure and so, kailangan ilalagay mo yung weight ng patient, tapos yung BMI niya. So, yun yung pinakaunang paragraph na explain mo sa provider kung bakit siya kailangan i-refer sa kanya. And then next, no, you would do is, isa-state mo dito yung relevant summary ng patient or you end your patient presentation. And then after that, you need to state the medical history of the patient as well. Like for example, as a result of, of this persistent morbid obesity, her comorbid conditions are becoming more difficult to manage. Tapos, ilalagay mo medical history doon. Uh, these comorbid conditions are as follows. Pwede mo enumerate, no? Like for example, uh, may hypertension si patient. Tapos, ilang years na siya may hypertension. Tapos, yung medication niya. Kung nilagay sa situation, no? no? I mean, I'm just basing it uh, based sa example ko. Doesn't mean na ito rin yung magiging example sa qualifying exam. So, you should be prepared as well, no? Sinabi natin na yung situation. Whatever the situation would be na ibibigay sa qualifying exam, no? Basta kailangan i-state mo lahat. After no, no, after na sinabi mo na yung background or your medical history, mga histories ng patient, would be stating naman yung, like for example, the situation is nandoon yung physical assessment and investigation findings. I-state mo rin yun doon, no? Ilalagay mo din yung finding patient na yun and in yung investigation findings. And then after noon, the last paragraph, no? What's the purpose of the referral? You would be making the request now. Despite this, her symptoms persist. I would greatly appreciate your clinical review, consideration, confirm the diagnosis, contributing to her symptoms. Parang ganon. Uh, tapos, after noon, syempre, don't forget, no, professionally, ilagay mo kind regards. Ganon lang naman. Your main key point dito is referral letter. Don't overdo it. Straight to the point ka dapat. Ano yung dapat na nandoon lang sa referral? Yun lang yung ilalagay mo wala ka nang parang masyadong nang nilalagay na pampaspice up ng referral letter. Next naman on the qualifying exam is yung SOAP making. So, what do you mean by SOAP? Subjective, Objective, Assessment, and Plan. May template tong SOAP making na to. So, let's first go to the subjective. No? These are mainly the symptoms that is coming from the patient. 
or ninarate ni patient. Sa lahat ng symptoms na nanggaling kay patient, it would be your subjective part. So, makikita mo doon yung HPIROS. HPI means history of present illness. No, ito yung mismong narration ni patient. Now, sa narration ni patient, we follow na every paragraph is per complaint ng patient. Iba-ibang paragraph yan. No? Don't make one whole paragraph for all the complaints. So, make it a point na every complaint na sasabihin ni patient, like for example, sa una, may low back pain siya. Tapos sa pangalawa, may depression siya. Okay. Unahin mo muna yung low back pain. Tapos sa pangalawa, depression naman. Ipaghiwalay mo sila ng paragraph. And then, after yung HPI or yung history of present illness, sa baba nun, yun na yung review of system. May low back pain siya, um, ilalagay mo siya sa musculoskeletal. Remarkable for low back pain. No? What if, for example, yung patient hindi naman niya sinabi na masakit yung ulo niya, o kaya masakit yung tenga niya, masakit yung mata niya, or may problema sa eyes niya, may problema sa stomach niya. In all the normal parts na hindi niya binanggit is leave it as it is. Don't erase it, leave it as it is. But if, for example, sinabi ni patient na may symptoms siya ganito, may low back pain siya, ilalagay mo sa musculoskeletal. Remarkable for low back pain. Huwag magpapalito, ha? Sa start lagi yan sa the patient is here for or the patient presents today with parang ganon. It should always have the reason for the visit. Ano ba yung chief complaint ni patient? Like, for example, um, severe headache, back pain, parang ganon, no? So, what what is the main reason why did uh, the patient visit your doctor? Okay, lang yung onset na headache niya. Like, for example, two days ago ba? A week ago? No? It, has it been recurring? No? On and off ba yung headache niya? Or yung back pain niya? Saan yung location na headache niya? Saan yung location ng back pain niya? Ano yung mismo narration ni patient, no? So, lahat yun isusulat mo sa subjective. Lahat ng sinulat mo sa subjective, ilalagay mo din sa review of system, which is under subjective pa rin. Sa review of system, ilalagay mo yung mga ninarate ni patient which is under subjective no again guys under subjective pa rin. like for example yung low back pain ilalagay mo siya sa musculoskeletal remarkable for low back pain pag may ilalagay ka sa review of system you would be always starting from remarkable for um, notable parang ganun pag walang na, na mention sa review of system leave it as it is na nasa template, no? Wala kang i-delete. The rest na nasa template ng subjective, okay? Huwag balito. Ng subjective, you leave it as it is. Let's proceed to objective part naman. Lahat ng nasa objective ay mainly magkagaling sa doctor. Okay? So, yun yung start na nag assess na si doctor sa kanya. Like, for example, sa video, Chine-check niya yung ears, yung eyes, uh, what else, yung neck. For example, chine-check niya yung um, ears or yung eyes. Tapos, uh, nag-okay lang siya. Parang nakita niyo sa video na walang problema. Chine-check niya, normal naman. I-retain mo lang siya sa template. No? I-retain mo, wala kang gagalawin. I-retain mo as it is. But, for example, pag hindi niya chine like for example, chine-check niya yung eyes, yung nose, yung head, um, ears, eyes, nose, throat, chinek niya yung mga yun. Pero yung findings ni Doc is normal, leave it as it is. Tapos, pagdating sa baba, example, hindi niya chinek yung banda sa stomach. Pag nakita mong hindi siya nag-proceed doon or hindi niya chinek talaga, that's the time na i-delete mo siya sa template. Pero, pag chinek niya and then sinabi ni Doc na normal siya, no, leave it as it is. Lahat ng parang in a note ni doctor, for example, meron siyang part na nakita niya na uh, hindi normal no nag note si doc no ilalagay mo din sa template yon so next naman punta naman tayo sa assessment um, yun yung mismong diagnosis ni doctor sa patient usually yung assessment may ICD code siya ICD code ginagamit niyan sa US para i-determine kung ano yung diagnosis ng doctor sa patient nila sinabi ni doc na for example 
meron siyang UTI or urinary tract infection. Ito mo ilagay yun sa assessment. Pero pag wala naman sinabing ICD code si doctor, kahit huwag ka na maglagay ng ICD code. Especially kasi syempre, video siya, no? Hindi naman siya talagang literal na kausap mo si doctor na pwede mong i-verify yung ICD code. Huwag ka na maglalagay, lalo na kung hindi ka sure sa ICD code na yun. Yung ICD code, chinecheck siya after mag-assess ni doctor sa patient, i-check mo siya kung ano yung ICD code nito. Like for example, sabi ni doc na may hypertension siya. May ICD code din yun. So, at the end of the session, visit ng patient with the doctor as your part. Ikaw naman, itatanong mo siya sa doctor mo, ano yung ICD code ng hypertension? Kukonfirm mo pa yan eh, kung ito ba yung ICD code niya. Pag sinabing yes, so, doon mo palang pwedeng ilagay sa assessment yung ICD code. But if not, for the sake of the exam, you can just say the diagnosis of the doctor as it is in a word. Now, let's proceed naman with the plan. Ito kasi yung mga recommendations at yung mga i-reseta medications ni Doc sa patient niya. Ano yung plano niya sa patient? Ang pagkakasabi mo is as if you are the doctor. Like for example, you will say, I will something and so on and so forth. You will not say as it is na para sa'yo. You will say na parang ikaw yung doctor. Parang you would write for your client. Pag natapos yung plan na yon, usually si doctor, iti-check niya yon kung may kailangan siyang i-revise sa sinabi mo or may kailangan siyang baguhin. To be detailed, it starts like this. Number one, no, ilalagay mo yung condition, reports, lab reports, like for example, for her, regarding the patient. Number two, yung explanation or yung discussion. Like for example, I discussed, I explained, I reviewed, I discussed the possibility of if need to test first. If something has been removed, sabi mo, I removed, I applied a dressing. So mainly, ito yung explanation or ano yung mga ginawa ni Doc dun sa assessment niya kay patient. And then after no, number three, ilalagay mo yung orders ni doctor. So sa orders ni doctor, before giving this, it should justify the number two of our discussion, which is yung explanation or yung discussion ni doc para kay patient. Ilalagay mo dito yung medications. Like, for example, for her, I prescribe, I recommend over-the-counter, and then yung medication. Kaya, I advise something, ganyan. I prescribe or yung generic name, yung dosage, no? Basta yung medication, ilalagay mo dito. Kung ilang times sa day siya, how would it be taken, and saan siya isa-send. So, kung anong pharmacy siya sa isa-send, ilalagay mo din yun. Lahat na makikita mo sa video, as it is to, in-note mo, lahat. Ang tip ko lang dito, lahat na makita mo sa video, i-note mo muna lahat ng information. No need to write in a sentence form. Uh, you can write like in a, an acronym form, no? Kung paano mo siya maiintindihan. Para bandang huli, kung i-edit mo na yung soap note mo, mas easy na para sa inyo. Parang hindi ka na mahihirapan. Ganon. And then, number four, after na medication, ano yung advice, ano yung recommendation ni doctor sa patient niya? Like for example, the patient understands and will comply. No? Uh, common words dyan sa advices and recommendation, lead, progress, develop to. All in all, to sum it up, yung plans is yun yung plans niya for the patient. Yun yung medications, lab orders, discussion, explanation, and all. That is mainly the SOAP note which consists of subjective, objective, assessment, and plan. I believe if you're letter making, live scribing, make computer navigation skills test din kayo. Parang ganon. And then yung medical knowledge test. And uh, may English test din pala. Ito may hindi tatlo na tinakahuli na sinabi ko. Medyo easy na siya compared sa soap note making at saka sa referral letter you can review ahead of time regarding sa English test and I'm sure makukuha mo naman yun. Basta importante lang talaga yung pinaka major qualifying exam which is yung live scribing test at saka yung referral letter making. Ayun guys, so nasabi ko na nga sa inyo lahat na scope ng exam. I hope and I'm praying that you would be passing the qualifying exam. No? I know you can make it. Kaya mo yan. No? Lahat naman tayo nagdadaan dyan. Even me. No? Nagdaan din ako dyan. And look at me now. No? I, I have a client and I'm working at home. No? Um, just do your best. No? Just do your best. Be positive. 
pray, mag-aral na mabuti, mag-practice. Just do your best to pass the exam. Mag-focus lang tayo. And if you have any question, you can comment in the comment box below or um, you can send me an email as well. I will try my best to answer all of your question. And I know you can do it, guys. Yun na lahat. Thank you so much for watching this video until the end. No, I, I really do appreciate you. And I hope that you pass your qualifying exam. That's it for now. See you in my next video.